Hello Year 6 and welcome to Maths on Friday the 15th of January and today we're going to be writing decimals as fractions. You're just going to need paper and something to write with today so if you want to get that ready and pause the video and write the yellow and date. Okay so we're going to start looking at this bar model. You can see that we've got our whole is a pound and it's been divided into 10 equal parts. So what's each part worth? Is worth 10 pence, yeah. And you can see I've got my 10 pence piece there. So we're going to start by warming us up by having a look at this. You don't need to write anything for this one, we can just talk through it. So what have we got here? Our bar model is still the same, so we've still got a pound, which is split into 10 equal parts. Each part of that we've said is 10 pence, isn't it? Um, how much have we got there altogether? We got 70 pence. So if I were going to write that, I would write no pennies, just 70 pence, 7 p coins. Okay. Now, how many of my whole do I have? Again, do you remember when we talked about the whole, the bar split into equal parts? How many equal parts did I have it split into? I had it split into 10. And how many? Have I filled seven? So very simply, that's what we're going to be looking at today, writing a decimal as a fraction. Okay, so let's get on with uh, let's get on with the work. So again, today, not having to write anything down, just talking at the moment. I would like you to tell me how many my whole has been split into. Okay, and what is each part worth? It's worth a tenth. Now, the last time we looked at it, it was worth 10 pence, but this is just a tenth, isn't it? Now, last time we looked, we had seven of them. How many have we got now? Three. So how would I write that as a decimal? Good. Now, if we have a look here at the fraction, how many tenths have I filled? I've filled three out of 10, haven't I? So hopefully you can see very clearly how the decimals and the fractions are linked. Okay. What about this time? Can you please pause the video and talk through it? What decimal have we got shaded? How many parts has the whole been split into? And what fraction of the shape is shaded? Okay, so hopefully you responded with one tenth has been shaded and one tenth as a fraction has been shaded. I'm sure you're very confident at this now. Okay, so let's have a go at doing this one. Just pause the video, see if you can fill in those gaps and then play it again and see if we've got the same. Okay, so the whole has been divided into how many equal parts? 10. Each part is worth 0 0.1. Can you see the shaded part, the filled part, as a decimal? What's that worth altogether? We've got four of them, so it's 0 0.4. How many are filled? Four parts are filled out of a possible 10. And so this is equivalent to four tenths. Did you get that? If you did, good. If not, there's a chance to get the next one right as well. Okay, you might notice that there's been a bit of a change. But have a go, fill this in. And we'll do it together in a minute. Okay. So the whole has been divided into how many equal parts this time? We have 100. So what's each part worth? It's not worth a tenth, is it? It's worth 0 0.01. Got a handy little counter there reminding us if we needed it. And the shaded part is a decimal. So how many have we got shaded purple? 0 0.25. 
We've got five lots of five there, 25 hundredths. 25 parts out of 100 are shaded. What's that equivalent to as a fraction? You could have written this in a couple of ways, this fraction. You could have written it as 25 out of 100, or if you wanted to simplify it, how many times does 25 fit into 100? If it's in four times, so you could have written it as a quarter, but writing it as 25 hundredths is absolutely fine. So hopefully that's very simple and clear. So let's keep moving on. Okay, now we're going to look at these numbers and see how we can write these as fractions. So I'd like you just to take a minute, pause the video and see what you notice about those numbers. Okay, you might have noticed that three of them have nothing in the ones column at all. You might have noticed that they're all decimals. You may also have noticed that they all have just tenths in their decimal, because they don't have hundredths, they don't have thousands. Now that's really important. If they all just have tenths, we can write them as a fraction out of 10. So we're gonna have a look at the first one. Let's have a look, 0 0.3. Three out of 10, you probably know already. I can't see. Yeah. It's written as three tenths. Can you pause the video and write the rest of those decimals as fractions, please? Okay. So this one, how many tenths? This one, oops, six tenths. And this one, that one was a bit trickier, wasn't it? 12 tenths. Now we said that some of them might, you might be able to simplify. Should we have a go at doing those now? Three tenths, can we simplify three? No, we can't simplify three tenths. So we'll leave that one as it is. Five tenths. Yes, we can, because five goes into 10 twice. So five goes into five once, and five goes into five, five goes into 10 twice. What about this one? Do they fit into each other? No, they don't, but there is a number that goes into both of them. Okay, uh, two. Two goes into six three times, and it goes into, uh, 10, five times, three fifths. Now this one, you could have written it as one whole and two tenths. If you wanted to simplify that further, you could have written it as, slide me up there, one whole and one fifth. Okay, so hopefully you've got on well with that. My husband, see if he can come and get a cup of tea. Not yet. Okay. So now have a look at these. I want to pause the video and see what you notice about all of these decimals. Right. You might have noticed that again, one of them has a, um, has a one in the ones column. They all are decimals, but this time they all have digits. Have um, they all have hundredths? Okay, so how do we write these then as hundredths? What do you think the denominator is going to be this time? Okay, so the denominator is going to be a hundred, a hundred, and the numerator is going to be what you see up there. So let's have a go. Thirty hundredths. Have a go at the other ones. Okay, how did you get on? Thirty-eight hundredths. Seventy-five hundredths. Now, some of these, although you can simplify them, we won't simplify them because leaving them as hundredths is fine. But this one, I think we will simplify. 30 hundredths, we've got nothing actually, although we said all of them have, um, a, have a hundredth, this one hasn't got anything in it, it's got a zero there. So instead of writing that as a hundredth, I would write that as a tenth still. So I have my denominator as a ten, three tenths. Do you notice I didn't write 30 because we're not looking at the tenths, uh, the hundreds, we're just looking at these tenths. This one I could simplify, but I think I'm going to leave that one there. Um, 75 over 100, what do you notice about that? You might notice that 25 fits into 75 three times. And you might notice 
that 25 fits into 100 four times. Now, do you remember what we did when we had a whole number before? We turned it into a mixed number. Can we, we can have a whole number and then we can have the fraction. So we've sorted out that one. We've got 25 hundredths here. So we could write it as 25 hundredths. We could write it as one whole and one quarter, because do you remember that 25 fits into 104 times? Hopefully that's simple for you. And hopefully you think, okay, if my decimal has tenths, I'm going to make the denominator 10. If my decimal has hundredths, I'm going to make the denominator 100. What would you do, do you think, if your decimal had three decimal places and it went into thousands? What would your denominator be? Yeah, it would be a thousand. Okay. Right. On to the work then. So we've got worksheet one and worksheet two. Again, they're on the website and you can um, download those and you can work on them. Number three. Um, if you go, want to go on to number three, the extension, I want you to stay on the slides for a little bit longer and have a go at a few more little activities before you go on to number three, okay? So you can pause that work now, um, pause the film now and do those sheets and then you can play it again if you want to, if you still have time at the end of the maths lesson. Now remember what we say, how long do we work for in a maths lesson? About 20, 25 minutes, you working on the sheets. You can do half an hour if you're feeling that you've still got plenty of it of um, plenty of go in you but don't sit there for ages and ages if you work solidly for 25 minutes and you don't get all of sheet one finished you've worked as hard as you can you can always come back to it later if you're thinking oh, i really want to get to the end of that one okay but if you feel like you've got time you want to go on to sheet three now we're going to have a look at how you can um, turn some of these fractions into decimals now, we're going to do that by, just going to move me again, having a look at a half and what's actually happening with a half when we're halving something. We have one whole and we split it into two. So if we're going to do that as a fraction, as um, a calculation, it's the one that we're dividing, isn't it? We're dividing it by two. Now, as you can see, we're going to start with that and say, how many times does two fit into one? It doesn't. But what we can do, we can put our decimal there. Yeah. So two doesn't go into one. We have one left over. But hopefully, you can see that we put our decimal in up there. Don't forget to do that. How many times does two go into ten? Now we know that a half is equivalent to 0 0.5, don't we? So when we're dividing, when we've got our unit fractions here, we divide the number one by whatever the denominator is. Do you want to have a go at doing that with an eighth? And then you can uh, play the video again. Oh, let's move me out here. So did you get the same as um, I got? So I put the one underneath just here and divide it by the denominator eight. Did you remember to do your sounds like that? Yeah. How many times does eight fit into one? It doesn't. So we put a zero there. How many times does eight fit into 10? It goes in one, remainder two. How many times does eight fit into 20? It goes into twice, doesn't it? Two eights are 16, remainder four. How many times does eight fit into 40? Five times. Do you know what? When I look at those numbers, I think, I might have been able to figure that out without the calculation. This is a quarter. What is a quarter as a decimal? Do you remember? If you don't remember, maybe you can work that one out. And look, here's my eighth. Don't forget that an eighth is half of a quarter. So I could perhaps have worked that one out. Now, if you want to have a go, why don't you have a go at these ones? A quarter, a fifth and a third. And we'll do the answers in a moment. That might be enough of an extension for you. Remember, this is just the extension. So if you're looking at this thinking, I haven't started the worksheets now, just stop and you can go back and start the worksheet stop at number one. But if you're looking for an extension, have a go at these. Okay, so let's work these ones out then. 
So we have got, we're dividing our one into four equal parts. I'm gonna give myself quite a lot of space because I think we might have some numbers going here. That's probably enough. How many times does four fit into one? How many times does four fit into 10? Fits into it twice. How many do we have left over? We have two. So we can just put a zero in here. How many times does four fit into 20? Five, yes. 0 0.25. I nearly forgot to put in that decimal. I have to really remember that one. I wonder how you're getting along with that. Right, let's keep an eye on that decimal this time. So the whole number is one and we're dividing it into five equal parts. How many times does five fit into one? None. A decimal there and don't forget the decimal up there. And put the zero here. Now I have one left over. How many times does five fit into 10? Two. So a fifth is 0 0.2. Now let's do a third. I wonder if you've got the same as me. Get along for that. Okay, so we're dividing by three. How many times does three fit into one? What have I got to remember? Yes. How many times does three fit into 10? And three times three is nine, so it's three times with one left over. Put zero there. How many times will three fit into 10? Three times, one left over. Did you do this? How many times will three fit into 10? Three times. The one left over. I think I'm just going to stop actually because I think I know what's going to happen. Three goes into ten three times with one left over. We are going to see a lot. It's never going to stop. We're going to keep going with those threes. Now we could write that slightly more simply. Zero point three. Okay, right. that means that three is going to go on and on and on. But if you think about it, if we were to write that to one decimal place, if we were going to say, right, I'm going to round it, um, you would look at round it to one decimal place, round it to here. We would look at this digit and say, okay, that's um, that's a four or below, so it's going to be zero point three. So we can do zero point three recurring, but also zero point three is equivalent to a third. Okay, so if you go back and have a look at this sheet now. This sheet is asking you um, to do what we've just done, but working out the decimals for different amounts of sevenths. Okay, so have a go at that. And we'll see you after the weekend. Okay, have a good weekend. Bye.